Hmm? There's, this is, these are free space so it's, yeah, so gaps, so they can imagine you can get to You can see the gapped top bars with the bees fanning strongly, drawing the flying bees into the gaps and into the new basket. Of course the big advantage of this method from the top bar beekeeper's point of view is that the bees are now already in a hive which has top bars on it. When the time comes it's very easy to lift the bars out one by one and put them into a proper hive. 
with hardly any disturbance to the bees. very clearly see the bees fanning to attract all the flying bees into the hive. This basket's been used before, uh, in fact it housed a colony over one winter, so it's got a very strong propolis and wax smell already in it, so it's particularly attractive to the bees. For swarm catching purposes, I think it's always a good idea to have such a basket. It makes life very easy. All we need to do now is to let the bees settle down, and then we can take the basket away and locate it where the bees are going to be kept. The best time to move bees, of course, is early evening when they've settled in for the night. So, on this particular occasion, we're not going to leave it that long because the, the weather's threatening to rain. So, we're just going to let, give them time to settle in a bit and then we'll take the basket away. We may lose a few flying bees in the process, but they'll find their way back to the hive, which is just over there. They came out of one of these hives in the orchard. Right here is another swarm that has emerged from another one of these hives. There it is in the tree. This swarm are in an upside down basket now, with a, effectively an entrance at the bottom. So they'll cluster in the, the what is currently the top of the basket, which is of course really the bottom of the basket. And then they can be moved to their final position. And we're ready. Thank you. 